know, three years ago, two and a half years ago. And so this is a, a video of him racing with the two little girls.
not just by knowing about him, not just by reading about him, but by being with him. Um, how many of you know who President Obama is? Let's see, only a few. You know who President Obama is, right? Now, how many of you know what his dreams are for the future? I'm not talking about his policies, okay? His dreams for the future. His personal dreams for his girls. How many of you have sat down with him and had a meal with him? Probably nobody, right? I don't think so, okay? But he has those things, right? And if you knew him with this kind of knowing, you would know those things about him. That's the kind of knowing that Paul's talking about. I want to show you one of our boys. This next picture is Ronald. And Ronald's one of our oldest boys. There he is. And there he is with his step, uh, his, one of his brothers, he's a twin. And so Ronald's on the left, and Charles, they're twins, on the left. And then Emma is the next, and he's also a brother, a half-brother to them. They have the same dad who died. They have different moms. Uh, polygamy is very, very big there. And then this is Brenda One. These kids we found at the church uh, three years ago. And so Ronald and uh, Charles are twins. Ronald is one of our oldest boys, a very bright boy. And I got to know Ronald. You know, you're going to know him from some pictures. The next picture, there's Ronald on the day of this interview. So they had to come to the, the Quarterstone office and talk to us. And we uh, began to get to know them. We wanted to know if they were kids that, that we could really help. The next picture shows one day again, you see that's June 28, 2010, when his mom came to visit. Now, these three boys have a mom who's alive, but she's blind. She's going blind. And in, in their culture, there's nothing she can do for work. There's hardly any work anyway. But there's no way she can feed these boys. She has other children at home. So we have the three boys so that they can get fed, have school, and that kind of thing. But the parents or the uh, guardians get to come once every few months, or we take the kids home once every few months so that they can stay in touch with their family. So this is another picture. This is more of what we know about Ronald. Ronald is the bell ringer. Can you see the bell? He's the bell ringer at school. You see it's going. I don't know if you can see. There you go. So Ronald is our bell ringer. He was the first year the bell ringer at the school. It's a very important job to have. One of those that everybody wants to have. The next picture. There's Ronald. This is in 2011. Next. Next picture. There we go. There. Ronald is in an orange t-shirt. Can you tell who he's carrying? That's Moses. Okay. And he's carrying him. They're going to Sunday school. That's Auntie Monica in the front, and they're walking. We'll be walking everywhere. It's about three quarters of a mile to the church. And so he's uh, walking with uh, Moses on his back. That's one thing I know about Ronald. He's very compassionate and sweet boy. Next picture. There's Pastor Rogers with the three boys. We were taking them home. This is where their their home is off here to the right from where we are. And we were taking them home at one point. And I think there's one more. There's Ronald in church, and he just about six or eight months ago said, I don't want to go to Sunday school, I really want to go to church. And so now he sits in adult church um, so that we can, uh, he can learn more. Um, I know Ronald from when he was sick, I know from listening to him, I tease with him, he teases with me. Um, I think there's a bike picture of him too. Is there another picture on the bike? Oh, play baseball, we have a team there. So they taught him to play baseball. And there's the bike. Abby bought a bike for them in December. And so each of our kids, we have 30 kids, and each one gets five minutes on the bike when we go out. And they're learning to ride a bike. And Ronald is one of them, so he's on the bike right there. That was before the bike got wrecked. Um, the basket's no longer there, and the belt's no longer there. But it's a bike. They get to ride. So I know about Ronald, and I love that boy um, so much. He's one of my, can't have favorites, right? But he's one of my favorite kids. And I know him, and I know him from being with him and living with him, but I don't know him like Jesus does. Amen? Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we're called to do, to fall deeper in love with Jesus all the time, to get to know him in an intimate way, to spend time with him like I spend time with Ronald, to spend time with Jesus each day to talk to him. Hebrews 12, 2, you'll turn there. I'm going to see how much you know about the Bible today. Hebrews 12, 2 says this, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. 
What does that first part state of the writer of Hebrews says, fix your eyes on Jesus. That's what we're to do. This is what I shared with the church as I was leaving. This is what I share with my kids in Uganda. Put your eyes on Jesus. Look to him. Spend time with him. Not just looking at him. This word isn't just about, oh, hi, Jesus, how are you? And go your way. This is fixing your eyes, looking at him intently at him. Keep your eyes on him. Continue looking at him. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. Since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you die, and your light is now hidden with Christ in God. Where's your mind supposed to be? It's supposed to be with Him. It had it. Set your mind there. As you spend time with the Lord, I want to sit, I want to see from your perspective what you see. It, also in Colossians chapter 2. I want you to know how much I'm struggling for you and for those that lay to see it, for all who have not met me personally. My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart, united in love, so that they may have the full riches and a complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I'm absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit. And I delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. By the way, right now, it's 11.15, so it's 9.15 at night, um, back in Padaka. The children have gone to bed, hopefully. Um, they're supposed to be in bed at 8.30. Hopefully they're really sleeping. <laughs> now that they're in big rooms, they, those of you who came to the class, you saw the, the new house we have for them. They're all in the same room. And um, they're supposed to be going to sleep. And I think about this verse. I am absent from them in body right now. But I'm present in spirit. But I can't be right with them all the time. So I want them to get to know Jesus so deeply. Let's keep going. Though I'm absent from you in body, I'm present with you in spirit. I delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Paul says this, I want you to know him. And that word, the word here for know, is a different kind of word. It's a study word. It's knowing about him. Um, if you show the next picture. The next picture of Rob. This is our leadership team at the orphanage. And I, when I started the leadership team, team three years ago, I just picked kids that I saw that really were leading other kids and being good with other kids. And it was really interesting. Pastor Rogers said to me, these guys aren't leaders. And I said, are they going to be leaders? And I began to train them and work with them. Well, just before we left, we took them to a Bali, and we bought each of them, we brought from here, a Bible for each one of them, which is huge. We only have maybe 20 Bibles in our entire church. Um, we have a 70% illiteracy rate in the village that we live in, so most people don't have Bibles and couldn't use them anyway. But for our kids, they're all learning. So we bought them a Bible, and then we wrote a scripture in the front of each Bible. And one thing I know about Ronald is that he studied. He reads what's in that Bible. He wants to know about more about God. And Paul says, I want you to be firm in your faith. Continue to live in him. Just as you receive it. How many of you have, show me your hands, how many of you have received Jesus as your Savior? How many of you has it been more than a week? <laughs> More than a year. Mm -hmm. More than 10 years. Uh -huh. More than 20 years. Interesting, this verse says, just as you received him. Do you remember that moment when you received Christ? Amen. You remember that? Praise God. And then it says, just as you received him, continue. Just as you received him, continue to get to know him. Be rooted, be built up, be strengthened, the church together. So the first thing I want to say to you is the same thing that I said to the church and I say to my kids, fall deeper in love with Jesus. I'm going to disappoint you. I promise. There's, there's no good. And you, turn to, your, turn to your neighbor there and say you're going to disappoint me. Go ahead. <laughs> and say, I'm going to disappoint you. <laughs> yeah. It's guaranteed, isn't it? Amen. Is it true? Those of you who have been married for a long time, do you ever disappoint your spouse? No. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. We disappoint each other, but Jesus will never disappoint you. 
Get to know him. Keep growing up in him. The second thing, remember that he will never leave you. Let's look at Deuteronomy, way back in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 31. And verse 6. Moses is speaking these words to Israel just before he's going on uh, to die. And he says this, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Second thing I want to say to you is God will never leave you. Now for my kids, the next picture is a, a group of our kids. There's all of them standing outside their new house. And when I look at them, I can tell you stories about each one of them. And I love I love all of them. Some of them are harder to love than others. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> People? Yes. But I love all these kids. And I look at them. <laughs> What's your name? You know? <laughs> That's Mangaly. She's our youngest one, right now. Um, 